Welcome back. I knew you would return eventually. Please look down at your feet. This number you see represents the number of power stars you need to access another world. Whether you succeed or fail, just attempting the challenge will show something about your character. Are you prepared to travel to the center of the universe? We already did that last episode, I don't feel like doing it again. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm here to you, and welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy! In the previous episode, we traveled to the center of the universe and conquered it! We are now the grand rulers of the universe! BOW DOWN BEFORE EMPEROR GAINER! Not really, we just saved the universe, defeated Bowser, rescued Princess Peach, all the usual Mario stuff. And in today's episode, we're going to be conquering the first bonus episode for Super Mario Galaxy. <gasps> a bonus episode? It's not being uploaded one million years after the finale of the main series? Gasp! <laughs> all right then, so in today's episode, we are going to be conquering all of the purple comets in Super Mario Galaxy, starting with the purple coin omelette. So how the purple comet levels work in Super Mario Galaxy is you unlock these after you've defeated Bowser in the main story. So this is Mario Galaxy's uh, post-game content, and I don't really think a whole lot of the other 3D Mario games really did anything like this. Like, with Mario 64 you have the thing at the top of Princess Peach's castle, Mario's unsigned, didn't really have anything. Um, but this game adds purple coin missions to it, which is pretty interesting. It adds like a nice little change uh, to uh, the levels you've already completed, and it gives you a reason to go back and uh, explore them a little bit more. Uh, so it, I think it adds like a really nice challenge. It's not my favorite post-game of Mario, we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Uh, basically, what's really interesting about the purple coin missions in particular, and this kind of applies to all 100 coin levels in Mario games, the importance of uh, the 100 coin missions seems uh, to uh, become less important as the series goes on. What I mean by this is the fact that in Mario 64, you could use any type of coin uh, to complete the 100 coin mission, but in Mario Sunshine, they changed it to make it so that only yellow coins applied to that. You couldn't use red coins or blue coins or anything like that. It had to be yellow coins to go for the 100 coin mission. In Mario Galaxy, it's post-game only. Like, you can't get the 100 coin missions in the main story. And uh, Mario Suns Mario Super Mario Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch also continues this a little bit because there aren't even well, I don't think there are even 100 coin missions in that game at all. Like I believe you do get a reward in the post game for collecting all the original coins in a mission in the world. I may be wrong about that, um, but um, yeah, it seems like the the basic trend of the Mario series is that the uh, coins become the 100 coin missions become less important as the series goes on. So, you probably already have this idea in mind as uh, you're watching the screen right now, but basically how we're going to be handling these missions is we're going to be taking care of every single purple coin novel in the entire game in one video. So, I put a lot of thought into trying to figure out how I wanted to handle this for my Let's Play when I was writing my notes for the series. Uh, I was switching back and forth quite often between going just taking care of them all in one video like we are doing right now, or taking care of all the purple coins in a dome per video. I put a lot of thought into this, and I even asked on Twitter what people wanted, and it seemed like everybody wanted the purple coin missions to be their own video and to take care of every single one of them in one episode. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So as you can see right here, the purple coin missions kind of change at the levels a little bit, which is pretty interesting. There are a couple of ones like that one right there where you don't have to get every single purple coin, you just need to get 100 of them. Uh, which is really nice because it would be kind of a pain in the butt to get every single one of them. I remember during Chuck Conroy's Let's Play, he didn't even get all of them either. And I think he even held a contest to see who could get every single one of them. And I think the winner got a copy of Kirby's Epic Yard or something like that. I'm not doing anything like that for my Let's Play. Because I don't really feel like having a contest or anything like that. I don't think anybody would even participate in anything like that. Uh, just simply because of the fact that I am not the biggest YouTuber in the world and I never will be, and I'm perfectly fine with that. 
But now we're inside the Beach Bowl Galaxy, and these purple cards right here on the tree were kind of a pain in the butt to get, I'm gonna be completely honest. So there are a couple field outtakes of this mission in particular where it just took a freaking eternity to get the ones on top of the tree, and I was like, I don't feel like editing this out, I'm just gonna restart to make it easier for me to edit. So that's something that's uh, pretty well worth mentioning. And of course, the dreaded Spring Mushroom has returned to grace us with its presence. And by graces with this presence, I mean we're gonna get rid of it in like two seconds. <laughs> uh, in case I haven't made it very clear by the rest of the Let's Play and my Galaxy 2 Let's Play for that matter, I don't like this Spring Mushroom. I'm glad that then something like this appeared in Mario Odyssey. Well, actually, there is something like the Spring Mushroom in Mario Odyssey, although it's not exactly a spring. Uh, I think I'm thinking of that one. Okay, but first of all, um, first of all, I really love uh, this uh, toad right here. He's all shivering, you know, it's adorable and things like that. And also, those two purple coins at the very beginning of this level, those are the ones that I missed on a field recording, so you definitely want to remember to go grab those ones. But, what I was saying a moment ago is something I completely forgot, so we're going to change subjects so it's not awkward. <laughs> That's what happens when you suddenly change topics in the middle of uh, talking really quickly during these videos. Uh... You'd think I'd be better at it by now, because I've been less playing for so long, but no, I'm still just as bad at us playing as I was. Well, I shouldn't say that, because I was really, because I, my review videos were really terrible. <laughs> uh, but on a more positive note, the Freeze Flame Galaxy is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm not trying to make a pun or anything like that, I'm just saying I really like this galaxy, and wow, the snow effect really looks really awesome when it's sped up like this. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, you want to go over there, and after you conquer those purple coins, you want to jump over this way. Whee! We're flying into a secret area that we already explored in the main series. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Thankfully, there are no boulders or anything like that that we had to avoid in this area, so... Thankfully, they decided not to be quite as big of a jerk as they could have been, although those, um... Not thwomp enemies are still there. And Captain Toad is so adorable, and your game is coming to Nintendo Switch, and I'm so excited for that! Yay! Captain Toad on Nintendo Switch! Uh, you know what? I'd really love to see Captain Toad playable in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, uh, because, uh, like, Captain Toad is just so adorable, and I think his moveset would be pretty unique, um, because he can't jump or anything like that, so I think that'd be pretty. A pretty great way to try to figure out how to make a moveset from work or something like that. It'd be kind of like Inklings, how um, a lot of people were trying to speculate on how the ink usage would work for their moveset, and then uh, when it was announced, it made perfect sense. I think something like that could happen in the Captain Toad as well. And also, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's coming out for Nintendo Switch, and I'm really excited for that because it looks amazing, and every single character in the Super Smash Bros. series is gonna be playable, and it makes me so happy. Snake is returning, Pichu is adorable, I love Princess Zelda's uh, new outfit, how it's based off Link Between Worlds, and I would've preferred the Breath of the Wild version, but the Link Between Worlds version is adorable as well. I'm just so excited for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's gonna be so amazing. Yay! <laughs> Uh, we're probably going to have a proper discussion on uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate over on the game channel at some point in the near future. Uh, I know we're planning on doing one for what new cameras we want, uh, so, well, I guess I probably could talk about that, because uh, there really is nothing to else to talk about with the purple coin levels. Uh, they're basically all the same, and that's something that I'm not really a big fan of with these levels, is that they're not, there's that, they all feel the same, and they're not, there's not really a whole lot of variety to them. Like, like, well, there are a couple of exceptions, like this one right here, I kind of really like the, to the Toy Time uh, Purple Coin Mission because it's a silhouette of Luigi, which is something that you didn't see in the main story, so it, it did add a couple of new things uh, to the story as well. So I do like when they change it up, but, but my problem is not enough of them do that, so that's kind of my problem with it. And also that was another one of those Purple Coin novels where uh, you don't have to get every single one of them uh, to uh, live. <laughs> So I'm glad they didn't do that because that level is hard enough as it is. I failed a lot on that one. Way more times than I care to admit. Alrighty then, so what I was going back what I was trying to say a moment ago was okay. Again, first of all, uh, I keep getting very sidetracked during these videos. <laughs> Um, these toads right here, what I really like about this level in particular is they give you a pretty good indication on how many coins you should have before you reach a certain point. And I wish more levels did that because that'd be pretty, um, useful. I'm planning on doing something similar with my Tomb Raider Underworld Let's Play, which is going to be pretty coming up pretty soon. Uh, where I'm going to give you guys advice on how many, um, collectibles you should have at a certain point in the, like, video, in the level, uh, before you move on. 
Uh, but I'm talking about Tomb Raider Underworld. We're going to be talking about Mario Galaxy. Except we're not going to be talking about Mario Galaxy because I'm going to talk about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate first. Yay! <laughs> Alright then. Uh, well, well, for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, I want to talk about a couple of the a couple of new characters I'd really love to see for that game. Even though we're going to have a proper discussion on this on game, uh, which, if, which if that gets uploaded first, um, or whenever that gets uploaded, there'll be a card on the front of the screen right now, which is going to be super fun for me to edit in the future. Um, although by the time you're actually watching this video, that would have been past it here. You Yay! Time zones, time differences, time warps, time portal. Whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, when I was starting to, when I, going back to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, now I'm going to talk about the characters I really want to see for the game. I already talked about Captain Tailed and how I think he'd be a really awesome character for the game. Uh, another character that I really want to see, I think this has a high chance of happening, and I'm honestly surprised they didn't do anything like this yet. But I would love to see Eevee as a playable character. If you don't know who Eevee is, first of all, shame on you, uh, but Eevee is my favorite Pokemon ever. They're just so adorable, and the really neat thing about Eevee is that it can evolve into most of the Pokemon types, so, and I think that'd be a really great way of uh, bringing in some more representation of Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon uh, type advantages, without having like a million characters. Um, because you have Charizard for fire, you have uh, the Squirtle for water and things like that. Um, you have a, a lot of characters like that, but there are a lot of Pokemon types that aren't really represented in, in Pokemon all that well, so I think Eevee would be a great character for that. And, I, and also, Eevee is just so adorable, and I just really want to play as Eevee. And the reason why I think it's very likely to happen is because Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu is happening, and they usually have uh, the Pokemon representative appear from like the latest Pokemon game, although it is also very possible that uh, the, the a Pokemon newcomer from the brand new game coming out next year would also be possible as well. And me saying next year, when we talk about the Pokemon game for Switch, has made this commentary more dated than it already is. <laughs> uh, I am not very good at making my commentary timeless, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, but anyway, another character that I really want to see for Smash Brothers, I'm not sure how likely this one is, but I love Hyrule Warriors, and I really want to see Alana playable. Because Lana is adorable, and I think she has a real opportunity for a unique moveset for Smash Brothers, like using her spell book to set up barriers and things like that. I think she'd be a really unique character for Smash Brothers. Um, and another character from Hyrule Warriors uh, that I really want to see playable, I maybe I don't care if they're playable or if it's just a trophy. I want some kind of representation in Smash Brothers for this character. I really want to see Marin from Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening was my favorite Zelda game for the longest time, before Breath of the Wild was a thing. And I really want to see more representation of Link's Awakening in Smash Brothers. I think Marin would be a really great character. If uh, she's a character, she's more than likely going to be like a something like an Echo Fighter for Princess Zelda or something like that. Um, but I really want to see Marin playable, or at least some kind of alternate costume for Zelda to make her look like Marin, because Link's Awakening is awesome. So, I'm not going to be talking about a whole lot of other newcomers that I want to see in Smash Brothers in this video. Um, again, you can check out the ch the discussion on game when that eventually happens. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be uploaded by the time this video goes out. Um, but, what I really want to talk about is the fact that this level and the next one we're going to see were like the biggest pains in the butts in the world. Uh, if you want an idea for how long it took me to record the footage uh, for these, uh, my capture card automatically cuts the video at 20 seconds. Like, there's no frame drops or anything like that, it just puts the uh, video file into multiple into multiple videos uh, after it spits into 20 minutes, after it goes beyond 20 minutes or something like that. But there was like six videos for all of the purple comment mo all for all of the purple comment level footage things. And the thing is this level alone took up an entire one. So like I had to scrap an entire video footage file thingy. Um, because it because it was just me failing over and over again and just wouldn't be interesting for commentary or anything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it took way longer than I cared to admit to beat that one. Although saying that those video files are 20 minutes long and saying it took an entire one kind of already gives you an idea for how long it took to beat that one. <laughs> but, we have now collected 120 Power Stars. But we're not quite done with Super Mario Galaxy quite yet. We now have enough Power Stars uh, to go to the, another world, uh, but before that, we must help your special one. 
I resaved her. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go to the very last level in the game, you're going to need to defeat Bowser again. I'm not going to be doing this uh, just because of the fact that um, I don't really see the point because we already defeated Bowser on camera during the finale. Uh, but that's going to be it for this episode of Super Mario Galaxy. So in the next episode, we'll be checking out Rosalina's library. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And next time, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, yeah.